In the previous lecture, we have created a sign up form that is using Angular Fire and specifically the Firebase of service in order to register new users. Now we need to implement a login functionality so we want that the, the user that we just registered will be able to authenticate into the application. Let's move into the code and let's take a look at what we need to do to implement this functionality. Well, our Firebase of service here highlighted at line 5, provides also functions that will let the user log in, functions that we can use to authenticate a user. Actually, we can also authenticate a user anonymously, but we won't do that as part of this lecture. We want to authenticate with email and password. So let's just copy this function because the structure will be pretty much identical. And let's copy that here. We're going to rename the, the new function into of user. We'll take the same parameters as an input. And the function we want to use to authenticate a user into our application is actually dollar of with password. So authenticate with password. And the parameters that it takes as an input, guess what? Are the same parameters that the sign up function takes in. So our function is pretty much completed. We can save our factory. So we have the new of user function. And the next step for us is to go back into the login controller. And again, we'll copy this function, the sign up function, below here. We'll call it self.login. Again, we won't have any input parameter, and instead of creating a user, we're going to use of user. And we want to have also two different fields for the login, email, and password. So we call it login email and login password. All right. Our function will return a promise, and in the successful promise, we we'll get the authentication data. In our half data object, we'll have the UID once again. We want to change the message to say user logged in successfully with ID and we'll concatenate the of data dot UID. All right. While in case of error, we want to say an authentication error occurred and we pass in the error as usual. How our controller function has been modified. The last thing we have to do is just to define the model in our login HTML view. At the very top of the login HTML view, we just need to create two models for the username and the password field. So we'll type ng model and we'll call it login CTL dot login email. And the same thing for the password. So ng model login ctl dot password, sorry, login password. All right, so we have two models, our input fields, and that's it. And last but not least, we need to hook into the ng click. Once again, I'm doing the basic implementation here, and I suggest you guys will copy from what we did in the last lecture, the different ng messages error, and adapt it for the first part of this file where we have the force form, the login form. I don't want to attach the completed code yet and let you guys complete it, but you'll find it in the upcoming lecture. So the final zip file will contain just what we're looking at. So ng-click login ctl dot login, right? And that should be it. We can save each file, go back to our application, refresh, as usual, we have to inspect the console and verify that we didn't create any issue in our console. We don't have anything here. And let's try to authenticate the user I created previously. So alex at webyourmind.com. If you remember, the password was capital U D E M Y 123. And when we click on login, we can see that the user has been logged in successfully with this UID. But let's take also a look at what happens in case of error. So the first error we want to check if it's a wrong password. So blah, 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 blah. I'll type something more. 
we get back an authentication error occurred and the actual error is error, the specified password is incorrect. And if you type a user that does not exist, an authentication error occurred, the specified user does not exist. So as you can see guys, it's very straightforward to implement the login and sign up. But what's left? Well, we can log in a user, we can sign up a new user, but still we don't have any security implemented in our application. I'm expecting that when I log in, I'll be redirected to the home page, the one we removed previously. And also if I click on the other menus, I can still see anything, no matter if I'm signing up or logging in. So this is what we're going to do in the next lecture. We're going to use the function we have just created to enforce security. We want to show the login page for the users that are not yet authenticated. And when a user authenticates, it should see the home page and manage events as usual. So let's see how to do that in the next lecture, guys.